The purpose of this update is to inform colleagues about three important uh, developments in higher education in England that have occurred over recent weeks and months. In the order in which I will discuss them, there has been the Comprehensive Spending Review, the Nurse Review of the Research Councils, and of course the Green Paper on Higher Education, which is now open for consultation. The Comprehensive Spending Review then, first of all, um, of course revealed significant cuts in government expenditure. Uh, Non-protected departments uh, were obliged to achieve significant cuts, and our department, the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills, uh, needed to find about 18% in, in total cuts. Now much of this has been found by converting uh, student maintenance grants to loans. We're acutely aware of the fact that this has a significant impact on the students that come to Queen Mary. And we're very acutely aware also of, of the hardship that that will impose in building up still further uh, student indebtedness. One of the implications of finding the savings in this way has been that uh, cuts in other areas have been less severe than we once feared. Now that doesn't mean there have been no cuts at all. So for example, there has been a significant cut in teaching support funding. We don't know yet the implications of that, how that will be distributed between different programs. We do know also there will be a significant cut to the Student Opportunities Fund. But we know also that support for research is flat in real terms, and that's an improvement on the flat settlements in cash terms that have applied in recent years. So that is to be welcomed. We also welcome the um, possibility of applying for significant capital funding, but this of course represents a significant challenge to us and other universities. We have to get our arguments organised and uh, appropriate bids formulated and we will know the details of how we're obliged to do that in due course. Turning now to the uh, nurse review of the research councils, this is named after Sir Paul Nurse who, who chaired the review body. They have made a number of recommendations concerning the organisation of the research councils and how they interact with respect to coverage of research support across all academic areas. And the proposal is that there should be a body called Research UK, which is in fact the accountable body to government, and that will encompass coverage of all the existing research councils. This in a sense represents a slight degradation of the status of the research councils, and we need to watch that to see what uh, the implications of that may be. But well, one of the important implications is that this brings Research UK closer to government. And there is a concern there about the maintenance of what is usually called the Haldane principle, which is that there should be an arm's length distance between government and researchers. And we need to be concerned about whether that might be eroded. Turning now to the Green Paper on Higher Education in England, the first point to emphasise is that this is indeed a green paper, meaning it's open to consultation. And that's important because there are many issues that we would wish to uh, pass opinions about in our responses to the, to the green paper. But the important issues that are covered are first of all the proposed teaching excellence framework. This is something that was in the Conservative Party manifesto at the last uh, election, and so this will take place. The details, however, are not yet decided. And again, there is considerable scope for making input as to what exactly will be the metrics and the other criteria that are used to try and assess teaching excellence. The TEF will be administered by the Office for Students, which in a sense is the successor body to the Higher Education Funding Council for England. But importantly, the Office for Students will also incorporate the Office for Fair Access offer, which is currently independent. What is striking about the proposals is the very clear separation between research activities in universities, covered by Research UK, and teaching activities covered by the Office for Students. This is an important new proposed development because, of course, previously Hefke has been able to take a holistic view of the health, academic and financial of institutions covering all aspects of their activities. So I have a concern, which we will certainly reflect in our responses to the Green Paper, about who is going to take that overview of the health of, of individual institutions. In particular with research, there is a question mark over who will conduct the next research excellence framework, and indeed who will disperse the funding, so-called QR funding, 
which is distributed on the basis of the results of the REF. Once again, we are dealing with proposals here that are in a green paper and therefore open to consultation. And we will certainly be making a detailed response to the green paper as Queen Mary University of London. Our response is being formulated, of course, by the Queen Mary Senior Executive, but I very much welcome any input that colleagues have, either personally or, for example, through Senate, to inform the response that we make. Bear in mind also that we have additional opportunities to influence the Green Paper, thinking in particular about Universities UK, who will be in close engagement with the government in this area, and also the Russell Group, which provides us a second channel to influence the way things develop in higher education in England.